Hello and welcome to another Warhammer The Old World Tomb Kings video. Today I'm going to be painting a chariot. As you can see I have undercoated the chariot with red primer and then heavily sprayed over it with white primer. The first colour up is going to be Hoplite Gold from the Army Painter Speed Paints range. I'm going to be using it quite extensively on the body of the chariot. This is one of the most time consuming parts of this paint job. There's quite a lot of metal work on a chariot as you would expect. so. The metalwork I'm going to be painting is going to be gold. I'm trying to remain as neat as possible, although I'm not too worried about hitting any areas that I don't want to hit, because I'm going to be touching them up with white paint before I continue further anyway. Just making sure that all the areas that I want to be metal are hit and well covered with the gold paint. Once the chariot's done, the two crew figures get their armor painted gold. They both have like a ringlet around their neck and both have a band around their head and they're going to be painted gold. Spear tip also will be painted gold. Next up is going to be white and I'm going to try and repair some of the mistakes that I've made using the gold. The next colours I want to use I don't want to be painting over the top of gold so we'll want a nice flat white colour to put our colours on top of. If you're new to painting, this chariot can seem quite intimidating. Just take your time. Next colour up is going to be Caribbean Blue. I'm going to use it for the front of the chariot. We want to be quite careful when we're using this that we don't allow it to pull up too much in any one area. Otherwise we'll get a streaky pattern. It will take two or maybe three coats to get a nice even coverage. That's just the nature of this thin paint. I'm also using this blue to paint parts of the yoke and some parts of the two crew members you'll see as I paint. Next colour up is Desolate Brown and I'm going to use it to paint the inside parts of the chariot. You can be quite liberal when you're using this on the inside of the chariot. You can't really do any harm, so just make sure you cover all the white areas. And if you are unfortunate enough to make some mistakes, we can quite easily fix them with our white paint, followed by whatever colour we're wanting to paint over the top of it. Now I'm going to add some of that Caribbean blue to the two crew members. I'm trying to use this colour sparingly, but trying to keep a uniformity with the rest of the army. I'm now back to my gold colour and I'm just really repairing some mistakes, some touch-ups. That's all I'm doing here.
And now I'm going to use Slaughter Red. And I'm going to use this to paint the spears. And I'm going to use it to paint the bow. I'm also going to use it to paint the quivers. Just to break the, the colours of the chariot up. Don't be intimidated by these larger models with more components. We're using the same speed paints and we're using the same color scheme. There's just more to paint. It's not any harder than painting an individual skeleton. Once you have your color scheme sorted out for your army, just stick with what you've got. If you're unsure, I suggest that you paint one or two skeletons just to begin with. You get the hang of it, get the feel for it, get to see the colours you like and the colours you don't like. Now for the pallid bone colour that I'm going to use to paint the actual skeletons including the horses and the crew members. I like to slosh this paint on in a good thick coat and let it pull up in all the nooks and crannies that add shading. I really like it. Just be careful not to splash any of the blue areas on the front of the chariot. It doesn't actually matter technically if you hit any of the gold, you're just going to add a bit of shading to it but we'll be doing that later in the process so there's no need to deliberately hit the gold the next color up is going to be satchel brown and i'm going to use it to paint parts of the quiver on both sides of the chariot. I'm being careful here not to hit the quills on the arrows. If I do hit any of the quills I'll go over them with white again before the process for the quills. Now for the whip, I'm going to use Grim Black. I'm going to put it on neat. That means I'm not diluting it. I'm back in again with my hoplite gold. Doing some more touch-ups. Mistakes happen and that's why we have our colours. We can go back in and we can repair any errors or any mistakes that we've made in the process. Next colour up is going to be brownish decay and I'm going to use it on the wraps on the skeleton crewman's arms. It's a very simple job, you can't really go wrong. Just in case it's not obvious, I have stuck both of these crewmen to separate paint pots using a piece of blue tack. You could use double sided tape, they're held on securely enough as long as you're careful. Now for some Agrax Earthshade Wash from Citadel Colour and I'm going to use it just to add shading to some of the gold areas on the chariot. I'm also going to use it on the quills of the arrows. And now for the basing. I'm going to use AK Interactive's Beach Sand. I'm going to paint it all over the base of the chariot. I'm still trying to refine my process of using this stuff. 
I do like it. It paints on really easily. It goes on like, like a melted ice cream or like a yogurt consistency. It does stay where you put it and you can shape it very easily. It's really, it's, it's a nice product. I just don't really like the finish. So this time I'm going to be putting sand straight over the top of it. And here we go. With the AK product still being wet, I'm just going to simply lightly sprinkle some fine sand over the top of it. And it provides the effect I've been looking for. This means I can safely miss out the PVA glue step that I was using previously. It doesn't need it. The AK Interactive material holds the sand just as well by itself with no PVA. And now I'm going to use a Garros Dunes which is a Citadel colour contrast paint. I'm going to heavily dilute it, very heavily dilute it, because I only really want it to stain the sand that's on top of the AK Interactive material. So three brushfuls of the paint to at least half a dozen brushfuls of water. This wash that I've made will also help bind the sand to the AK interactive material. Not that it really needs it, but it doesn't do any harm. And once that wash is dry, it takes roughly an hour or so, you can pull out the screaming skull and give it a decent dry brush. And that's just really to highlight the sand areas. This gives quite a nice effect, I'm happy with. When you're doing this, if you hit any areas of the chariot, quickly get a wet, clean paintbrush and you can pull off any of the paint that you've hit the chariot with by mistake. And now I'm going to use some of my Army Painter Highland Tufts and Deadland Tufts. And this is just to add an effect, a 3D type effect to the base. As I've said in previous videos, these are inexpensive and they provide a really nice effect that doesn't take an awful lot of effort. Lastly, I'm going to use my tan earth colour to edge the base. This is quite a thin colour and it will take two or three coats to give it a nice even coverage. There will be a list of paints used in the description of the video. Uh, this one's from a company called Coat de Arms. They actually were the original Games Workshop paints manufacturer. I'm not, they didn't have the name Coat de Arms. I'm not sure who makes them, but that's the brand they're sold under these days. And there we have it. My first finished chariot in quite a long time. Two more to go and that's the unit complete. I hope this video has been of some use to you, given you some ideas, let you realise that anybody with a bit of effort can paint these models to a reasonable standard. If you could hit the subscribe button, it would help me out greatly, if you haven't already. I appreciate it very much that you've watched the video, and there will be more Tomb Kings videos in the near future. Thank you.